Okay, we are back here again with another Geo 7. Uh, this one is complete and functional. Somebody has replaced the fuse holder there with a smaller one. And as well as F901, someone has a different style in there as well. Uh, instead of putting the legs on there, they just put uh, some holders in there. So they got a fuse holder there and a fuse holder there, which is convenient for me. Uh, but I tested both of those fuses and they tested good. And I did an inspection and, every, and everything looked okay, so I fired it up and it works. Uh, B plus, they did not change the B plus pot, but they changed all the pots on the board and the neckboard pots. But they did, all, they did also, they did also, they also did not do the uh, centering mod. So we'll get that done. And I'm also going to replace the B plus pot. However, it is functional. It should be 120, but it's set to 118.8, and those are so touchy. I don't really want to mess with it. I'm going to change it anyway. But this, uh, it is operational. I tested to make sure the fuses were good, and based off of that, it should have fired up, and it did. Uh, I'll show in a moment what the problem is, and we'll take care of it. Um, but you can probably see from the title of the video, you already know what it is. But the flatback is re is original. Uh, I'm not going to replace it because it does function and it is working, and we have decent, good B plus, and the monitor is operational. Uh, these do like to fail in spectacular fashion by just exploding in the middle and, and blowing themselves apart into two pieces. And uh, but I'm not going to replace it because it is working. And there's no reason to do that at this point. Uh, but yeah, like I say, it is it is functional. It's got a cap kit. Uh, it's clean. And the only issue with it is collapse. We have vertical collapse. And it's usually only a, uh, one or two of three different things, so it should be fairly easy to troubleshoot and find out. Uh, this also has the curl mod done to it, to where you move some capacitors around and put a a capacitor in another spot and I talked about the curl mod in the video previous to this one. Uh, so all we're going to do to this one is do a nice reflow, replace the B plus pot, get it to 120 and try and fix the vertical collapse and then uh, that's going to be about it. So let's get this all torn down. I wanted to show this before. Like I usually when I have collapse like this I will uh, just go ahead and have the chassis already off the tube and discuss it and say hey I had collapse before and then we find the problem and make sure that it works. But I wanted to go ahead and turn it on here and show that it is functional beforehand. Our B plus is slightly off at one, almost 119 instead of 120. But these are so touchy, I don't really want to mess with it. I'm going to replace it regardless, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but I wanted to show that we are actually collapsed. So that way when we get this figured out and find the problem, we'll hook it up and make sure it's good. So that all being said, let's go ahead and get, uh, turn this off, get it all apart. And we will do some troubleshooting. Like I say, it's usually only one or two of three things. And it's fairly simple to figure out the vertical collapse on the G07. Kind of like the K7000 where it can only be a couple of resistors, a couple of diodes, or the vertical IC. Same kind of thing here. So I will take this uh, apart, get it all broken down. We'll come back on the overhead and we'll discuss what the problems usually are. And we'll see if it's one of those three issues or something different. So let's see. Okay, so we have it here on the bench, ready to go. And the, the, two, the three issues that I mentioned before, the most common issues that can cause vertical collapse is FR401. This guy here is a fusible resistor. This is FR401. It should read 68 ohms in circuit. If that's open, there'll be no vertical deflection and that could be the cause of our problem. We also have X401 and X402. If either one of these transistors are bad, open, shorted, you'll have no vertical deflection. So those are the three components we need to test first. So FR401 here should read 68 ohms in circuit. And if we test it, all right. Uh, very rarely will it be bad, but it is known to cause issues. 69.1, is that, what does that say? 69.1, come on. We got these rubber legs, or rubber uh, covers over the legs, it's hard to get a good reading. 69.4, there's some, it's a bit higher because I'm touching, uh, it got, you know what, let's just do it the right way. Gosh darn it. <laughs> this was that. Uh, FR401 is right here. Uh, here we go, FR401. 68.7. Sixty-eight point six. All right, so that's good. Uh, the next step is the um, 
X401 and X402, these two transistors here. If either one of them are bad, there'll be no deflection. And that is here. Can we do this in frame? Let's back up a bit. Okay, diode mode. Uh, we will go to collector of X401. Actually, you know, let's go to the... We'll go to base. No, collector. Sorry. To read this properly, go to collector. We should have, in diode mode, with our negative lead on the collector, we should get our voltage drop to the base, and we should have, I think, open to the emitter. Yeah, so there you go. Collector to base is our voltage drop. Collector to emitter is open. And if we go to 402, uh, collector to base is... Hey, 0.572, and emitter is, oh, that's interesting, 0 0.9, that's not, a, that's not a normal reading, but I wouldn't necessarily say that's bad. It looks like somebody's already tried to replace this in the past, because there's some, there's some, looks like fresh solder and some flux here, so... I think somebody might have tried and might have tried to troubleshoot this in the past and gave up, but I wouldn't necessarily say that's a bad reading because we've got our voltage drop and it's not shorted. So I'm not sure what's up with that. But now that I look at this, <laughs> look at this, look at these solder joints here. Um, let's see, that's not good. That's, uh, as they say in Police Academy, I think it's uh, Police Academy 5. That is, oh, crackola. <laughs> oh, crackola. That's a crack, and that's no good, and uh, what else? That's no good. That's no good. Holy cow. Let's reflow these and see if that gets us a different reading on X402. Like I said in the last video, I'm going to turn my fan on here. Like I said in the last video, these because these get screwed to the side, they take the, the flyback and it bends it over and it causes cracks and all kinds of problems on the board. So when you have, you know, um, shut down or no high voltage, this is something you want to test and look for. And sure enough, we got this problem. Now, I didn't think about looking at this initially because we had collapse, but some of the voltage for the deflection circuit comes from the flyback. So, let's see if we can set this up here to reflow some of this here. 10 seems okay, but we'll reflow it anyway. I mean, that's just a straight crack around there. And one and two are completely cracked. Three is a, basically cracked. I don't even think four was protruding, uh, protruding through there for the pin. Five might have been the same way. Six. Seven. All right. Now let's see if there's anything else here that I would need to hit before we before we do this now they did change these pots so let's make sure that we don't have a bad vertical position or linearity problem no that all seems okay all this all this flux on here this is this is all flux that nobody got rid of uh, FR903 is a bit suspect here. Uh, let's go ahead and reflow 401 here.
Hmm, that's interesting. See that? There's a crack on. Uh, there you go. See that? Uh, still attached, but that's got a crack on it. That's why inspection is important. But I took a chance and just went ahead and fired it up. Because the fu if the fuses are good, generally speaking, it should come on. If you if the fuses are good and doesn't power up, then you got a problem in the 900 section. Uh, by the uh, you got a problem in the 900 section here for your voltage regulation, or you got a problem with the flyback area, like crack crack joints and stuff. But for the most part, if you've got uh, functional fuses, then the chassis should at least turn on. All right, well, let's see if reflowing that flyback gave us better readings here on our X402 there. Something we're... Something we uh, should be seeing. Where is it? Right here. Let's move this over. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, collector to base is our voltage drop. And let's see if we're still reading our odd reading on emitter. Yeah, we still are. Huh. Well, um, I wonder if reflowing that flyback could have solved the problem, but I don't think 402 is our problem because obviously somebody had already replaced, someone's already replaced this because of the, the new solder, the fresh solder, and the flux. So someone's already changed this out. I don't think that's our problem because if it was shorted, it wouldn't read our voltage drop across there. It doesn't read the same as 401, but um, I got another G07 here. Let's look at what this other G07 reads. I got one here I haven't had a chance to do much testing on yet. Uh, so let's see what 402 reads on this one. Okay, collector to base, voltage drop, collector to emitter. Ah, see, that's the same thing. Okay, so that's a normal reading, I'm assuming. So, our X401, I'm sorry, <laughs> FR901, FR901, please forgive me, FR401. Our FR401 is good, and our X401, X402 are good. So why do we have collapse? So I want to go ahead and put it back on the tube and see if uh, we still have collapse after reflowing those solder joints on the flyback. And, you know, if, if I don't, obviously I'll show that, but if I do, I'm just going to come right back and cut back to here. Um, yeah, usually it's either FR401, F401, or F4, I'm sorry, uh, it's been a long day, FR401, X401, X402. <laughs> there we go. That's usually the cause of that. So um, it's already been capped. We know our flyback operates. So I wonder if it's just simply the bad solder joints on the flyback that caused it. I'm going to go ahead and turn it back on and see what we get. If I come back, and you see it like this again, obviously it didn't work. Uh, if you see me cut back and run the tube, then it worked. Um, I'd hate for it to simply be bad solder joints because I like to actually have something be a smoking gun, if you will. That way we can all learn something. But, you know, I guess it's still uh, worthwhile if we if you get a vertical collapse G07 and it's not any of those three components and, you know, maybe you can check the flyback pins and if it solves it, hey, but let me get it tested. If it works, I'll show it working. If not, I'll come right back and you'll see it <laughs> back just the way you see it right now. So hang on. Well, uh, it did not work. However, I found the problem. I mentioned more than once now that usually it's, when you have collapses, one of those three issues. Since they were all good on the chassis, I thought, well, maybe I, should, I better check the yoke. And that the reason I decided to do that was because somebody has uh, broken the connectors all around. And this is when this is due to uh, 
if you put it in the game and the image is upside down or backwards, you can switch the yoke connectors around and flip the image and reverse it and mirror it and all that. So someone's done a bunch of work to this. And also, if you look here, we got a burned up, a burned up connector here. Uh, and this is one of the the connections for the vertical. The the uh, horizontal is the red and white, and the vertical is gray and brown. So now, if we go to the red and white wires here, uh, this is our white wire. This is our red wire, and as you see on the meter, we have uh, remember 1.8. Let's just say two ohms. That's a normal reading. Uh, you, should, you want your horizontal to be around two ohms, usually give or take, on almost every yoke that exists. Uh, but the vertical is where it gets interesting because on the lower res chassis, like uh, well, not lower res, but like most of the Wells Gardner ones, the vertical is around eight to ten, uh, anywhere, but I guess six to 10, anywhere between six to ten. But on the G07. On the G07 and the 4900, the vertical is around 50 to 60. So again, if we go to the horizontal, we got our two... Uh, come on. Two ohms. If we go to our um, vertical, uh, let's see here. We've got the brown wire goes to this pin, and the gray wire, you can see our gray and brown wire, they go to this contact and this contact. And you can see we have our wire here going straight to our wires going straight to this contact and then over here we got our wire going straight to this contact it's hard to see uh, but if I touch these two connections we have nada zilch zippo so we have an open yoke fantastic <laughs> So, our open uh, vertical winding. So now, that when you have this problem, you have to try and f f see if you can figure out where it is, why it's open, where it's broken at, who knows what happened to it. So I'll see if I can't do some digging on this and see if I can find the issue. If not, we're going to have to end up doing a yoke swap. Um, I don't have... I don't think I have any Geo 7 yokes. I might have one that will work. I have to go and see, but let me do some digging on this and see if I can find the problem. If not, I will go about uh, my stash and see if I can locate a higher ohmage um, vertical winding yoke with a horizontal that reads around two, and then we'll see if I can do a yoke swap here, and then we can make this video very interesting. So stay tuned for one moment. Well, I figured I have to remove this in order to um, find and troubleshoot and see if I can figure out where it's broken or cut at and I thought well since I have to do that I might as well just replace it so I went down in my stash and I found a compatible yoke Now I say compatible because like I mentioned before the horizontal should read around 2 ohms if I read this one 2.2 let's see if I can get a better angle there 2.2 now, uh, the G07 usually reads around 52 to 55 for the vertical. Again, if I go here, we got nothing. If I go to the middle one here, nothing. So this side of the winding is open. Because if I go from the middle to here, we got, eh, come on, 28 ohms. So it goes through two windings. And if you take uh, 28 and double it, what do you get? 56. So 52 to 55. So I have another G07. If I when I went and tested that one across here to here, I had 56 ohms. So that correlates to the 28 here times two, which well, I guess it's 30. I got a bad connection there, 28.2. So we've got this section of the winding is no good across these two pins here. And you can see that there's a wire right here um, that goes over here to this wire. So somehow, some way, this yoke is open. So if we test this donor yoke here, it's 2.2. .2, so our uh, horizontal is good, 2.2 .2 compared to uh, 2.2, .2, exactly the same. And our vertical, you'll see if I go across this one to here, you'll see that I have, there's a 26, just like this one. But if I go across from the wire to the wire here, there you go, 52.3. So I'm going to use this yoke as a donor for this one. So the best way to go about this is, let's grab a Sharpie. Where's a Sharpie here? All right. Uh, let's see. Let's mark. 
get this dirt off of here. Let's mark on our glass here where this set. This is the best way to do this. That way you know the orientation and position of where this was. And uh, let's see, we'll go ahead and mark the rings as well. Just in case we get this off kilter. So now you can see we have a straight line across the rings, the retainer, and the tube. That way when you go to put this back together, you can put it back exactly where it was. So, here we go. Let's loosen up our yoke. Let's loosen up our rings. Let's take this off of here. It's not usually, not usually that easy, but this is glued on here. Okay, got to be gentle here. You don't want to break the neck. Come on, glue. Get off of there. Okay. Now, what really scares me is... Well, it's pretty dirty. I don't see anything immediately jumping out. But... Yeah, I'd like to reuse the original if we can. It runs down to here. So this is the side that's not good. And if we follow our wire here, uh, it runs down to here, to this. Eh. And then it goes under here. Disappears under the glue. Uh, so now I'm not going to be able to take this apart because our wire disappears under the glue here. It's this this guy right here. This is the wire that runs up to our connection. Uh, so I don't think I'll be able to salvage this one somewhere. It's open and I simply don't know if I'll be able to figure it out. And just to avoid the headache, we're going to go ahead and just swap in this other one. All right, set this aside. So now we know the problem. Well, the likely problem. I didn't take this chassis here and put it on another tube that works just to verify, but I'm sure it's fine. Because um, we tested the usual three culprits and then we found this being open. That's all it could be. So what scares me is all of these, um, there is a whole crap ton of convergence strips. And they're just disintegrating as I try and touch them. There's a whole bunch of these convergence strips, and I don't know if I should just go ahead and take them all off and start from scratch. I mean, they're all just basically falling apart anyway. I might just go ahead and take them all apart and start from scratch because each yoke is different. Uh, but that being said, where is, did I, nothing stuck to that. I guess we'll just forget about that for now. I was going to, as in hindsight, as I say this, I'm like, nah, I think I'll go ahead and just leave it. Because um, there's no reason to take them off if they work for what they are. And uh, I don't want to have to put them back in. They're just falling apart. Um, that one doesn't even have a magnet anymore. Oh, yeah, it does. Okay, we'll leave it there. All right, so I don't know... I imagine it's going to go in this way. We can always flip our wires around if need be. Okay. I don't know how... See, so you can take this here. Let's move this back. Depending on where you have it, you know, if it sits here or sits there, or it has to sit right there, that's all our purity adjustment. Um, but we'll go ahead and just put this somewhat in place where the old one was um, because you can actually have this yoke it can be up or down or crooked this way or crooked that way twisted we all know about the twisted part but it can be sagging down this way raised up that way you want to have it sitting on here flat so it's not angled down or angled up you want to push it as far as you can up against the stop and you don't want it to you don't want it to raise up like this you want to have it somewhat flat against the stop and not have it, you want to have it centered, uh, roughly we'll try right there, 
If I look at it from the side, it's kind of pitched up a bit. Okay, let's try right there. Uh, so let's tighten this up. Let's tighten this up right here where it's at. Okay, we still got our black mark on our tube here. So let's grab this, put this back right. Okay, I didn't move around. We'll put it back right there. That's exactly where it was before. And we'll tighten it down. So this is the ideal way to do this. Um, you know, if you have to change the rings out, you're really in a world of hurt because you don't know where it needs to be. If you change the rings out from a different tube, all things like that. So you want to keep the original rings with the original tube. All you're interested in is changing out the yoke. So we have all of our original um, rings here. They haven't shifted or moved. All of our black mark is still intact on our tube, our retainer and, well, I'm sorry, our rings, retainer and, and tube. Actually, you know what? I think it's back too far. I think I moved it back too far, but uh, let's go right there. Okay, that might've been where I had it before, but that's okay. All right, so now um, what I need to do is I need to desolder the wires from this yoke and put them onto this one. That way I don't have to cut and splice the wires for our connector here for the Geo 7. So I'm gonna cut away and have all these wires desoldered and solder on the new ones, or well, the replacements from the old yoke. Uh, but since we have it installed now, let's go ahead and test again, just so we can verify and make sure our horizontal is 2.3. Perfect, and our vertical, 52.6. I think that'll be fantastic. So let me get these wires swapped around, then we'll uh, put the chassis back on the tube, and hopefully it works. And then we'll have to deal with getting the yoke right, getting it forward and back, left and right, convergence. Uh, we shouldn't have to move any of our rings, assuming that no one messed with them originally. We can see that all the colors are basically lined up on the red paint here. So I don't think we're going to have to deal with any of this. We might have to tweak it a little bit slightly, but if they have any issues, we're going to have to use our ingenuity to move the yoke around, remove or add to our convergence strips, things like that. So let me get these changed out. We'll come back, we'll get this chassis installed, and we'll see if it has full deflection and where we're at with our yoke convergence. So here we go. Okay, so new wires are soldered on, or replacement wires, original wires, whatever you want to call it. And uh, let's go ahead and test to make sure everything is good. I've got the wires routed around the side like they should be. There's a zip tie on the bottom you can't see. I'll show you later. Uh, but the red and the white should be horizontal. So if I go to the red and the white, we get 2.4. And then our vertical should be the gray and the brown. I'm sorry, I did, you can't. I did that off camera, sorry. Let's go back to the red and the white here red and white 2.6 very good and then our vertical which was originally open is now 53 ohms and if we go to again to here we got 50 55 56 um, you know there's we got oxidation on the pin here that's burned up but I think we're good to go. So now let's get our chassis reinstalled. I don't think there was actually anything wrong with it. I think our yoke being open absolutely would cause collapse like that. So let's plug in our degals. Not necessary, but I just do it out of habit. All right, make sure we're not resting on the B plus resistor. You don't want that. All right. Ah, oh, come on. Let's just go ahead and screw this in here. All right, we're sitting in place. Nothing is shorting. I'm only going to do one screw for now because all we need for testing. Uh, let's hook up our Nano cap.
Oh, come on. This is an old one. It's hard to get the hooks in there. There we go. Okay, that's good. Let's get our ground hooked up. All right, and before we hook the neck up, we'll get our yoke connected. The uh, horizontal is the very out, very last one, and the second one. Vertical is the first one and the third one. And then the fourth pin doesn't have anything. So horizontal is pins two and f uh, five. And vertical is pins one and three. Is that correct? I think that was correct. You have horizontal is pin five and two. One and three is vertical. Brown and red. Okay, so uh, let's hook up our next socket. There we go. So we have anode, neck, yoke, ground. We're secure. So let's get power. Uh, we don't need a video signal just to make sure we have deflection. So I'm going to turn this around. Okay. Uh, let's hook up our power. So we have anode, neck, yoke, ground power. All right, so let me cut away here. I'll come back off the overhead. We'll turn it on and see what we get. Hang on one second. So here's our original yoke uh, with the bad vertical winding. Well, not bad, but open vertical winding. We got our new one installed, ready to go. So let's turn it on. Uh, one, two, three. Okay, it comes on. Uh, the tube takes forever to come online here. Uh, let's go ahead and turn up our flyback. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. It's running. Oh, hey! There you go. Full deflection. So let's get a video signal on this puppy. Imagine that. <laughs> let's let's uh, move this over. Oh, there we go. Okay, let's hook up this. All right, and like I said before in the previous video, uh, sink, you have to jumper pins two and three here on the sink connector for a standard JAMA game. So pins two and three are jumpered just like so. And pin one is empty. Pins two and three are jumpered. Then we have RG, B, and ground. So let's turn on our test pattern generator. We have our... I don't want to be touching the other post there. Let's make sure we're not doing that. All right. Okay, let's try again here. Nothing exploded. Let's see what we get. Whoa, focus up, you dirt bag. There you go. Come on. Mm, what's going on here? How come uh, we don't have any? Oh, we do. Man, this tube is super tired. If it would focus, there you go. So we just have a sink problem. Uh, let's do uh, vertical, actually horizontal hold. I think it's this one. And what do we get here? There we go. Now we got to do vertical hold. What's going on here? Is that even turning? It's not even turning. Oh, dang it. Uh, how am I going to do this? That screwdriver is too... Let's try this here. Let's try this one. I can't turn this stupid thing. It's just spinning around in there. Gosh darn it. Um, let's try this one. 
Nope. Well, how am I going to do this? Uh, hang on one second. All right, so I was able to get it to lock on by adjusting the vertical hold there by getting creative. But as you can see, we're way too tall and we've got uh, purity problems on the whole. All four corners have purity problems. So we're going to have to adjust our yoke, unfortunately. Uh, let's do vertical height. Can I adjust vertical height here? Yep, outstanding. Uh, we're going to have to do uh, vertical center. Needs to be moved something awful here. Let's just put it in the middle. There we go. Uh, not worried about that just yet, but hey, we have an image. Let's adjust our focus. Focus looks pretty good there. Turn this down. And roughly uh, right there. Right there. Focus looks pretty darn good. So there you go. Just off of a tube swap. Uh, we're pretty much centered. That's good. Uh, vertical is shifted. I need to shift it up. Can I shift it up here? Let's try this. That's down. Well, we're definitely going to have to do, because that's up, we're definitely going to have to do the centering mod. Um, if we adjust vertical position, or vertical size again here. Um, right there. Well, we have a pretty darn good image. Uh, let's see if our what our convergence looks like. Um, We'll have to scroll through here. Well, look at that. Our convergence is glorious. As we suspected, our convergence is pretty much perfect. Well, now we're a little bit high in the blue right there. Uh, but for a quick yoke swap that's pretty darn good um can i adjust these a bit uh, let's see here yeah there we go but that's better that's much better that's still a bit blue up to the top but i think for a quick yoke swap that's pretty freaking good uh, we are pin cushioned a bit because this doesn't have the curl mod. Uh, well, I think it does. Um, yeah, it does have the curl mod. Okay. Well, not really too worried about it. But we have in our corners here, let's get a solid screen. Let's just get like a... There, see? In our corner, we have blue, blue, red, and red. Now, that's not a degauss issue. That is a yoke problem. Uh, we can try and adjust our purity here, but I don't think the purity is going to adjust it. Um, or I don't think the purity is the cause of that. I think we're going to have to move our yoke around. So let me get the camera on the tripod and see if we can work some magic here. Okay, sorry about that light on the top, but I need that light to be able to see what I'm doing back there. So you should still get a decent idea here of what uh, is going on if it would stay in focus, which it probably is not going to stay in focus. I'll try and keep an eye on that. What we're going to do is I'm going to move the yoke around. Uh, see, this stupid thing is just hunting. Camera doesn't want to be fed. It wants to hunt. Okay, that might be okay. What I'm going to do is move the yoke around up and back and see if I can get this to go away. And if I can get this to go away, we'll have to tighten the yoke down in that position. So I'm going to loosen the yoke again. Okay, yoke is loose, and I'm going to just move it around here. There, see, I moved it. See that? I moved the yoke back. I took it and slid it back off of the neck, and you see how it got worse. So if I slide this closer to the, the tube, so I need to come closer. So I need to get rid of this. I'm going to turn this off, and I need to get rid of this... Uh, This thing. This. Oh, of course it went out of focus. This thing. I just pulled this off the back of the tube, and we're going to move that uh, yoke a bit closer. So we'll leave it where it was, right about there. 
Let's turn it back on. It should still be the green screen. Focus. There's our green screen. I'm going to move that yoke as close to the tube as I can get it and watch what happens. Ta-da! <laughs> so, just a, a very good example of how important it is to have the yoke in the correct position on the neck. Too far back, too far forward, you end up with those purity problems. So, uh, let me go ahead and see if I can balance this. Uh, that seems pretty good. And I moved it. Let's go right there. Let us uh, tighten that down. Now don't move on me. Don't you go dying on me. Okay, we are now tightened back down, and let's scroll through our other colors here. There's blue, white. Ah, see now that we have our corners corrected, look at this now. See how we have this in this corner and that in that corner? Uh, but the problem is you can't move the rings. So let me explain this again, like I've mentioned before. The, the center, this area here, is pretty much fantastic. So you can't move your rings, because if you do, you're going to mess up the middle. So since our middle is pretty much perfect, and it's our, it's our corners here, oh, it's our corners that are jacked up, uh, down here is jacked up, in the bottom left on these two corners, what I'm going to do is move or replace or switch around or alter those convergence strips. Uh, these things right here. Uh, so this is was in this location here, and I just took it out and I moved the yoke all the way forward. So now it's resting against the uh, the black pieces, and that fixed that problem. Uh, if that did not fix the problem, we can adjust our very first two sets of rings here, which are our purity, which that would have solved it if moving the yoke did not. Uh, but now we have a nice solid yoke here. And when you grab this, to when you have power on, uh, you loosen the, the neck, you can actually touch, you know, you don't want to touch the windings. They're coated, you're relatively safe, but I'm not going to touch that. If you touch these, you will get zapped pretty well. But uh, you can actually touch it. safe to touch the plastic re retainer around here and the, and the black metal pieces. So I can touch this here and I touch this here and I move it like this. And so that's how I move those around. Uh, but so I think we're set, we're good to go on all this adjustment here. What we need to do now is start getting rid of some of these um, convergence strips. And that's where the real fun's going to begin. So let me see if I can set this up and zoom in on this. And you can actively see... When I take this convergence strip out of here, uh, watch what happens. I'm going to try and do this to where uh, it will work on camera here. Gosh darn it. I don't know where that went, but it looks like it got worse. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, that's that one. Gonna have to get some more here. So I can't turn these. If I turn these, it messes up the other ones. Yeah, see, that's really no good. I'm going to have to get... Yeah, I'm going to have to use convergence strips because the middle is fantastic. It's just the bottom. It's the four corners. Ugh. All right, well, hang on a second. I'm going to take all these... Uh, I'm going to take all of these convergence strips out and see if I can do some re-maneuvering here because, see, it, it did change a bit. But it's still over here is just worse. Look at see how how bad that is. So I can't make an adjustment. If we look at the middle, the middle's great. Uh, you know, like the middle's fine. 
but it's the four corners that are odd. See how bad that is compared to the middle? So I can't go adjusting the rings because it'll throw off the middle. So I wonder if I... Uh, these convergence chips are what are, are what are killing me now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and cut away. I'm going to take them out and see what I can do about making this look better. So hang on. All right, so I got all the old crusty, burned up, falling apart convergence strips out. You can see the disaster here of trying to get all these things out of here. Um, they're just, they've been on there for 40 years and they just disintegrate when you try and take them apart. But I do have what looks like uh, five uh, other replacements here that are used, but aren't nearly as in bad a condition. So we're gonna see if we can't make this work. So the only real problem areas we have now, after pulling all those out, as you can see a bit, if I think we're a bit too blue, as a matter of fact. Let me see if I can turn the blue down. Uh, I don't know which one this is. This is... Oh, now wait, they're all turned down. They're all, all the way down. Oh, you gotta be shitting me. I didn't turn those up. Uh, well, let's turn all these to center. Right there. Right there. Right there. Uh... This is usually a step that I do. I must have missed it. Halfway. Halfway. Okay, that actually looks better. Um, let's just take a... Let's just... Let's uh, take this whole endeavor in here. Now let's turn down our, our brightness a bit. Roughly there. Focus is pretty good. Okay, so now we're back to where we were. If we look, uh, all of our all of this is pretty much good. Uh, we do have some down here in the corner. Up here is much better, but over here is our real our real problem area. As you can see, that is a that is not good. So let me. There we go. So I'm going to take these. Convergence strips. This guy here. I'm going to sl uh, slave it in there inside the yoke, and we'll see if that makes any difference. Let me get out of the way here. Okay, let's try. Mm. I'm too close. The yoke is too close. Hmm. The yoke is too close. I can't get the thing down in there. Let's try a different one. Let's try a different one. Bear with me. Bear with me here. So that's too close there. That's the right area. Let's try here. Okay, well, you get the idea. Rather than have you sit here and watch me for half an hour try and do this, let me uh, try and finagle these in the right spot. Get them just where they need to go. I'll show you afterward where they went and how good this... I know you probably want to watch me do this live, but this may take quite a bit of time. So I'm actually going to... You know what? Let me go ahead and just uh, continue on and I'll do a I'll do a, uh, a time lapse. Let's just... That way you can actually watch this in real time. Well, not real time, I guess. It'll be time lapse. But that way I don't, I don't have to cut away and you can watch me do this. Okay, so let's <laughs> let the time lapse begin. Well, it did not turn out too well, and this is actually the next day, and I discovered that the reason I had 
such bleeding issues with the blue and uh, all around here. I had the blue that was bleeding was because the flyback was bad. If I would actually adjust the focus, as I adjusted the focus, that blue uh, bleed on the crosshairs here, or the crosshatch pattern I should say, that bleeding blue that I had in the corner and dealing with the other places, that blue would actually either increase or decrease completely and was caused by the focus on the old flyback. So I put a new flyback in it and I put a new B plus pot in it as I mentioned before, and I also did the horizontal and vertical centering mod there with the two adjustment pots. So all the mods are, to this are now complete. Uh, after replacing the original flyback and putting the new one in there, it's now perfect. Absolutely perfect. So my whole, you know, I tried to do the time lapse there, and I, I just got frustrated and frustrated and frustrated. I moved the yoke around, I moved the, the rings around. I, could, I spent like three hours trying to just perfect this, and I could not get it. It was then that I decided to go ahead and try and adjust some flyback uh, adjustments, the screen and focus. When I adjust the focus, I noticed that as it got fuzzier, the blue bleed would go away completely. As I brought it back in focus, the blue bleed would come back. So I went ahead and threw a new flyback in there, and that problem was gone. So let that, <laughs> let that be a lesson to you. Uh, even though the flyback is functional, it can still cause other problems like that. So let me go ahead and show you here how well this turned out. As you can see, it's pretty darn good. Let's zoom in a bit. That's about just damn near perfect, I must say. Uh, we still have a little bit of um, pin cushion, a little bit of pin cushion, but not too bad. So there you go, ladies and gents, an absolutely beautiful image. Uh, I'm not going to say perfect convergence, but for what we just did with the complete yoke swap and, and moving the, the rings off and everything, uh, this is pretty darn good. So you saw how important it was to get the yoke in the correct position, otherwise you get discoloration and, and uh, purity problems. So if you get the yoke in the right spot and you still have purity problems and you degauss it and it still has purity problems, adjust those first two set of rings closest to the, the neck, or closest to the tube. But there you have it. Um, after replacing that flyback, it solved all my problems. Uh, again, it's not perfect, but it is good enough for government work, as you can see. So let's scroll through here. Um, there's our checkerboard pattern. Looks great. Uh, color bars. We got perfect, beautiful RGB. And, yeah, it's looking fantastic. There you have it. So let me get an actual PCB hooked up. We'll see how this looks with a real board running, and we'll proceed from there. All right, so let's turn a real PCB on here, my super high-impact football, and see how it looks. It's likely to be much darker because, I've said before, the test pattern generator outputs a video signal much higher than normal. Yeah, that's pretty dark. Um, let's go ahead and turn this up to roughly right there. Let's kill the light. Will it stay in focus with the... It might. Uh, we need to... We're a bit too red, and we need to adjust our horizontal position. As you can see, it's too far to the right. So it's a perfect opportunity here to test our new... Uh, our new pots. Okay. Can I... There we go. Look at that, all the way left, all the way right. Horizontal centering pot is good. So there is, we're centered, oh, come on. All right, so we're centered left and right. Our colors are way off, <laughs> way off. Um, yeah, uh, let's go right there. Uh, it's not gonna stay in focus, I'm sorry, come on. Maybe if we zoom in a bit. I don't know what to do. This stupid thing. Let's try without the light. Does that help? Uh, so yeah, look how red that is. Wow. <laughs> okay, so we're going to have to turn the red down. I need to turn my light back on, though. Uh, oh, come on, you royal bastard.
What the heck? Come on. Did I lose my... Yeah, hang on. I lost my dual connection. Uh, there we go. Back on. Bada bing. Okay. Uh, let's... Can I skip? I can't skip this. So let's start by turning down our red. There we go. And now we're a bit too green. We're still too red. There we go, that's better. Uh, how about some more blue here? You're my boy, blue! Ah, looking good. And of course, it's not in focus. <laughs> you, you rotten bastard. There you go. Uh, let's turn up some more green here. And a little bit of the red. Well, that's not bad. Eh, I was still too red again. Gosh darn it. Anyway, you get the idea. There's no reason for me to spend an hour trying to tweak these pots, but... That's better. Okay, well there we go. Uh, if we review, a quick review here. This was already rebuilt with, you know... Um, it had the new pots on it. It had the new caps on it. I had to do some reflow. And after uh, we figured out that the vertical collapse was actually not a chassis problem, it was caused by a bad yoke. An open winding. Focus up there, you piece of junk. A bad winding on the, uh, the yoke. So we replaced it with a compatible donor. And we are back in business. So just to... Uh, when you have vertical collapse, it's not always a chassis problem. Very, very rarely will it ever actually be the yoke, but case in point, it very well can be the yoke. So, um, after we got all that done, we tried our hand at the convergence, and it was okay, but we had some blue bleeding, and it turns out that was being caused by the flyback. Put a new flyback in, and it's perfect. As you can see, we don't have any... Um, Convergence problems, everything is lined up, RGB, it all looks great. And it's a little bit red in the uh, bleed on the top, but I can't adjust that out. Um, I ended up having to put in, let's see, one, two, three. I put in three um, convergence strips to fix some of the areas that uh, needed it. And if you're unfamiliar with those, I have a video on the convergence strips. You can just look at, uh, search my page for convergence strip and you'll find it. Um, or search of my, uh, my videos here. But I need to tweak all the colors. It's still a bit off, uh, but I'm not going to spend half an hour, an hour on camera trying to do that. You piece of junk. Anybody want to buy me a nicer camera? <laughs> I can't ever keep this thing in focus here. Uh... Well, sorry about that. Anyway... All right, well, hopefully you learned something. I'm glad this worked out. I'll let it run for a while, make sure it's good, and we'll add it to the inventory. So uh, I'm sorry there hasn't been a video here in a while, but I've been in training for work, and I got other stuff going on here, and it's Christmas time and all that. So uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Like, share, and subscribe if you want. Uh, again, like I say every time, lots more stuff on the way when I can get to it. So I appreciate it, and we'll see you then.